This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to take a look at some of the activities that we have taken on as a club for both of our repeater sites. And if we're lucky, we might sneak in a little bit of footage from the famous El Cara Fish Fry. That's this week on El Cara Ham Radio. Well, I said I was going to sneak in some fish fry video, and here's just a small little snippet of cooking up some fish, french fries, and a whole lot of other good food. That's one of the things we look forward to every year at El Cara. But we had to get to work on another work day. Now, this is at the main repeater site, and again, the reason we show uh, these videos of working up at the sites is to show people that there's more to the ham radio maintenance activities than just working on the repeaters themselves. Uh, our sites are on top of mountains. One of the sites needs mowing. Other site needs additional weed control. Here we're on the inside and we uh, are adjusting the ARCOM controller. We had forgotten to put on some of the little nuts needed for the serial cables to attach to, so we installed those. But we've been having a problem with this ARCOM, and we couldn't tell if it was something we had done or if it was something about the ARCOM or the programming of the ARCOM. And so we got some of our new members out, as well as some members that have been around a while, and we started to troubleshoot this. That's the ARCOM on the very top there that everybody's kind of taking a look at. So AC4DM, KY4EAR, myself, uh, KY4CLB, Chad, uh, one of our newer members, uh, we started uh, kind of tinkering with the ARCOM to see if we could get it to do. Now we're trying to use port number two. We're already using port number one successfully with the main repeater, and we're using port number three on the ARCOM controller for APRS and uh, some other things. So port number two, we want to use for our remote sites. We had a video on that uh, not too long ago of instead of putting repeaters at some of these remote locations, utilize what are called receivers, transmit, the, transmit that information into the main repeater. And port two is just not, uh, not playing ball. So here we have Chad uh, putting the cover, I think, back on the ARCOM here. We uh, decided after adjusting the programming and running some voltage tests with the multimeter and so forth that we probably didn't put the ARCOM together correctly. We bought it as a kit, similar to another video we showed you uh, from an earlier time. This was an earlier ARCOM build, and we think maybe we've done something incorrectly uh, that impacts port number two. ARCOM does have an expansion board. We are considering getting one of those, and that, that will take one of the ports and expand it out to three, and that will still allow us to do what we need to do, or we might actually troubleshoot. Here we're taking a look at the Compact 10 of Microbeam. This is just some uh, quick footage of taking it out in the field. We'll have a part two coming up on this antenna a little bit later, but you can see it does look different. And there it is up on the drive on mass that we built for the gravel rally and we'll reuse many other times but just out testing it beautiful day in middle tennessee in this photo and then we got to work on another project when you've got two repeater sites and one of the repeater sites has a lot of room on the inside you start saying well what uh, assets does the club already own that uh, may not be uh, uh, at the repeater sites? And we have two six meter repeaters. Our club is extremely fortunate to have uh, repeater pairs for six meters, two of them. And uh, we have one running uh, over in the shop here at HQ that we're gonna take to Monticello. And here we're building or potentially repairing a six meter repeater based on a GE Master 2. Now, for some of the folks that have been around a while, you might remember the GE Master 2s. These would typically be in sheriff's cars and police department vehicles and things. These are not new. And we'll look at some of the componentry here in just a minute, but we're checking the voltage. We need five volts at one point and we need 10 volts. It's a step down voltage regulator to take it from 13, what have you, from the battery to 10 volts. And this exciter that you see in front of you now utilizes 10 volts. And uh, those 
cans or those uh, square coils uh, need to be tuned in such a way so that the exciter will work correctly on the frequency that we need it to work on for six meters. And I think this one is 53.270, if I'm not mistaken. So we put a dummy load of four 200 ohm resistors in parallel, which gives you 50 ohms. And uh, we started hooking up power from the regulator board there on the left, where we've checked the 10 volt, five volts uh, on that particular board and the uh, connector. And we've connected that to the exciter board there on the right with all of them, uh, the rectangular uh, coils. And uh, Don's just hooked up 12 volts or is in the process of hooking up 12 volts. And we wanna see if this exciter that came out of a GE Master II uh, is working correctly. It was working just fine as far as we know, uh, but we thought uh, as we had some members here, let's uh, show the members how to read a schematic and check voltages and see if we can tell whether or not the exciter is working as it should. So AC4DM is giving us a class on schematics and on uh, tuning, as we'll see in just a few minutes. And this is what I love about our club. We have Elmers in the club that have been doing this for decades. And the ability to read a schematic, the ability to take old equipment and make it into what you want it to do. Uh, Don was told many times that you couldn't take a GE Master II and take it apart and make it act as a repeater. And uh, he's done it many times. Uh, and so we'll see various components in the future. But this, again, this will be for six meters. And if I'm not mistaken, this one will go up to the 88 repeater site. We're checking uh, an HF rig here on six meters to see if we can hear uh, any type of signal coming out of the exciter. Now, remember, we've got a dummy load on it. It's not putting out, but just my, you know, milliwatts, so it's not uh, very loud. We're not sure if you know it's really putting out enough that we would pick it up on this radio, even though proximity-wise, we're only about 50 feet away from it. Um, and I can't say that we did. So, uh, but we thought we would check. We we didn't have the exact right equipment that we needed to check the uh, wattage out. So we were just trying some alternate methods. And then Don pulls out some test equipment for the GE Master II. Now, I believe this is an Echo model, if I'm not mistaken. He'll correct me, I'm sure, if it's not. So we put the exciter on a chassis uh, mount that he's fabricated. And part of this comes out of the old GE Master II uh, equipment um, chassis. And then once we have this uh, screw down and ready to go, we're gonna hook it up to a test board that also he created. Uh, because he worked with these GE Master Twos a lot over the years. And you can see this piece of plywood uh, with the uh, power regulator there on the left. And there's also a black connector on the uh, PCB on the left that we can hook up this test equipment and begin the tuning process of those coils in those silver square uh, rectangles that you see there. Square rectangle? <laughs> but anyway, connecting the, uh, the connector there and then we'll apply 12 volts and uh, we'll go through the tuning process for this exciter. Working with some of this old equipment's a lot of fun because all of the components are physically visible. I mean, this is not micro miniature. And uh, here we're looking at the, uh, the voltage coming out and Don has his uh, tuning stick and he's going into each of the coils and based on the, the guide, the uh, tuning guide that he has in his lap, we are adjusting those tuning coils to get the maximum in some cases or the, uh, the dip, the minimum in some cases. I believe this was on uh, the dial to the far right, which you can't see, set to A. And then the second dial was set to 1. So here we're moving it off of A to B, and then we'll tune some additional coils. There was eight or nine of them total, I think, that we had to go and adjust. And here are the instructions and the different uh, coils. And sometimes you had to adjust two or three at a time, not at the same time, but two or three in that section to get it tuned. So that's on B, and then tuning various coils to ma maximums and minimums in some cases to make sure that it will operate as it's supposed to. Again, taking old equipment and repurposing it for six meters in this case. And so these are some of the activities that our club is uh, doing. This was an impromptu workday. The original workday that you saw where Ben was out there mowing, that's a scheduled workday. That's on our calendar. It's the first Saturday of the month. 
uh, we have the third Saturday of the month where we go down to Monticello, which used to be the abandoned repeater site. So we have those on the schedule all the times, but we also will call an impromptu work day to work on various projects because there's always something to do. And that's kind of where we're going to leave it this week is to give you some ideas of what your club could be doing. It's not just about buying new repeaters. It's not just about uh, the radios and antennas that you might use. All of that is fun and all of that is good to watch as well. But sometimes, how do you keep repeaters on the air? How do you put existing repeaters on the air? How do you repair repeaters and controllers? And all of that, you need people in your club that are willing to take those projects on have fun with those projects, but also act as mentors uh, for your young members and for new members who may not have some of these skills. So the GE Master II being repurposed as six meters. Hopefully we'll have more on that later on. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4BDP. Hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully it gives you some ideas of what you could be doing with your club. 73, everybody.